Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. Today with two maze puzzles, both made and designed by Oscar van Deventer in the Netherlands. From first point of view, both of them look amazing and very unique. This one is called the Fractal Mega Maze, while this one's called Andreas Maze. And this cool pattern you can see here is based on a so-called dragon's curve, a mathematical curve that creates out of a single line an infinite pattern. And I found a pretty cool description to show how this works on Wikipedia. So for example, I have one strip of paper and if I fold this strip and fold it again and another time and then just unfold it and arrange all these pieces in the folded direction at a 90 degree angle, I get this pattern here. If I do it now again with a second strip of paper, I also unfold them, bending the edges in 90 degree angles, same as before. So if I take these two shapes now, which are identical, and I rotate them in this case by 90 degrees and connect them and continue with this line over and over and over again, it will create a dragon's curve. This is basically how it works. There are also jigsaw puzzles, by the way, which are based on this. I reviewed them in earlier episodes. And this, for example, is called Third Dragon Curve. And this is also based on pieces that are cut out of wood by using or a similar pattern. So, so for example, to explain it, this one here, if you follow this line, you can cut out the complete puzzle as it is here. By just following this single line, it will create this complete pattern with just one single line except some areas which he added here of course to separate the pieces and to take them out but in general it's possible and I would assume here on this puzzle there have been also some small modifications done to make it work properly like this one down here for example or this line over here but this is basically how it works and it creates this the task here is to maneuver this ball down here to this exit over here this puzzle is called Andrea's maze. It's called after Andrea Gilbert. And according to the description that came with it, she realized every maze has a dual maze coming with it. So it means you can walk in between the walls to solve the maze, but you could also walk on top of the walls too. And this approach was used here to create a maze which basically consists out of two mazes. Sounds weird, but if you look in detail, this is the starting position. So you start with the ball in this tube. If I turn this maze around, it's not in the tube. It's in the track over here, okay? So on one side, everything you see here, all these walls and tubes are on the other side, the tracks. And these intersection points here, and, and the, all these intersection points here can be used to transfer from in between the walls to on top or inside of the walls. Sounds pretty complex and I'm not sure how difficult this is. Actually, I haven't reviewed many maze puzzles here on my channel, so I'm really interested to see how this works out after the spoiler break. Hmm, okay, so which one should start first? I would do the Mega Maze, the Fractal Mega Maze. It's now in the starting position. I, just, I will just zoom in a little bit because the ball is really tiny. So if you follow the track here, you can see that it goes inside here, a dead end, another dead end, another dead end. Then it goes inside here. So dead end. Dead end, dead end over here. Okay, so this is also dead end. We go out again. So we use the rule of the right hand. We always follow the right hand side or the wall on the right hand side. And in this, with this method, you can solve pretty much every maze. But the disadvantage is you also need to go through the complete maze and through all dead ends. So I will try to shortcut this by understand how this works. And I hope I will not get lost because getting lost here will be probably be very confusing. So I will just follow the path. And every time I come to a section like this one here, I will just follow it quickly and check if there are some dead ends. Here are dead ends. So I will just follow this way. This looks not too bad. If I follow this path, dead end, dead end, dead end. Yes, I will follow this one. Also this tiny ball, this sound. Really cool, really satisfying. Didn't expect anything else. I mean, this is a puzzle made by Oscar, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just need to keep in mind where I came from. 
what if I go here, dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end. Okay, I will take this way. Go over here, no, no. So I go here to the right, which is heading towards the, where's the exit by the way? Here is the exit, probably. I think this can be also a nice puzzle for kids. Despite the fact that it's very sensitive and can be damaged easily, it can be, I think, a very nice challenge for my son. I will give it to him later. Oh no, I think this is already the exit over here. If I go out here. And here we go. Another puzzle solved. Here's the proof. I won't go back now all the way. I will do that later to save your time. Pretty cool puzzle. It's not too difficult. I would give it a two out of a maximum of five for my personal difficulty editing skill. You need to concentrate on it to not go the wrong ways, but in the end, you will probably make it every time. And now I'm gonna tackle this puzzle and I think this might be difficult for you to understand what I'm doing here. Therefore, I will place a light from behind. Okay, here we go. It's got a small light and a stand. By the way, nice stand for a puzzle channel, right? <laughs> Bring this down a little. Is this visible? Yes, I think this is working as expected. Okay, so this is the starting position. Beside it here, this is the final position. So I gonna what I'm gonna do now is, I, I just noticed I can't go this way. So I need to go this way over here and I, I'm already confused now. Okay, so let's see. We need to go from here to here. We go here, back from the ending. We will end up here and then we transfer here to the upper side layer. So we go inside a tube, we go all the way around over here and then to the start. Okay, let's try this. So I go here, all the way around. Now I'm here, I will try to go inside this gap. Here we go, and now here. Now I'm here in this one way. And now I will drop out and follow this way over here. I think this is pretty much well, probably also the solution. Here we go. Bam! Puzzle solved. This was quite fast. I'm not sure why, maybe because I used the light, but in the end to find the right way by just using this path over here and then transferring, go back. This is independent from the light source down here. Let's try to go back without. If I would not use the light, the track is still visible, impossible to find. I would have to remember that I'm in this corner here, which equals this edge over here and I would need now to drop down into this maze. Now I'm over here. Yeah, this makes it a little bit more complex. And now let's see if I follow this path. I should be able to get over here. Going over here, just turning the puzzle around. And now I'm following this path. In here. Here, here, and here. And this is the starting point again. Turning of the puzzle upside down makes it more confusing, but to find the right way is actually pretty simple. Unfortunately, this whole path, part here of the puzzle is not really used, but a very interesting approach. I think a puzzle with a bigger size would be definitely much more challenging and maybe a little bit more confusing tracks or longer track from the beginning to the end. Just my personal thoughts, comparing these two, Difficulty rating of this one, I would give it a 1 out of a maximum of 5, while this one was, from my point of view, a 2 out of a maximum of 5. 
That's it for today. I hope you like these two puzzles. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I put you also the link where you can get these puzzles in the video description. And until next time, keep on puzzling. <laughs>